Hey everyone, it's Dr. Christy. If you've been following peptide science, you already know that 2026 is shaping up to be one of the most exciting years we've had in metabolic health. Between the new generation of triple agonists, the rise of mitochondrial peptides, and smarter metabolic boosters, we now have more targeted tools than ever before. Today, I'm breaking down the top five peptides for fat loss in 2026 and how I'd layer them inside a research and educational framework. This is for educational purposes only, not medical advice. All right, let's get into it. Number one is going to be retitrutide, the star of fat loss heading into 2026. Retitrutide is still in clinical trials right now, but expected to be released soon pending full approval. So if semaglutide and trisapatide rewrote the rules, then retitrutide is one of the rising stars that's going to raise the bar this year. It's a triple agonist, GLP-1, GIP, and glucagon receptors, and that glucagon pathway is what drives increased energy expenditure. So increased fat oxidation, not just appetite control. We're still seeing the same dramatic phase two results up to 24% body weight reductions in under a year. Nothing else on the metabolic landscape hits numbers like that as of 2026. Retitrutide also improves liver fat, insulin sensitivity, and inflammation markers. I look at retitrutide as a metabolic reboot, powerful, effective, something to cycle as needed for a metabolic boost, or if you're someone that's struggling with obesity, this could be an excellent option for reducing weight and improving overall health markers. Of course, pair it with strength training and adequate protein to protect lean mass, like all the GLPs. We need to protect our lean mass because anytime there's a weight loss, we're going to be losing some muscle. We want to minimize that. All right, number two is MOTC, the mitochondrial reset peptide. MOTC is one of my favorites conceptually heading into 2026 because it works deep within the cell. And remember, this is one that's also produced naturally by our bodies in our own mitochondria. But here's the important note. MOTC has only been studied in animal and preclinical models so far. There's not any real human clinical trials yet. Mechanistically, MOTC activates our AMPK pathway. That's our master energy sensor. That's going to increase fat burning, improve, um, improve glucose uptake, so improves insulin sensitivity and it also restores mitochondrial efficiency. I use it in a research context during rebuild phases and after stress or after dieting. It can be really nice after a GLP-1 when people want to kind of reset metabolic flexibility back, take a break from a GLP-1. Also helps to support lean mass during a fat loss phase, so that can be useful as well. And it pairs incredibly well with NAD plus for cellular synergy. Number three is 5-amino-1-MQ. This is the fat cell shrinker. So again, a quick reminder, 5-amino-1-MQ is also studied in only in animal studies at this point. There are no human clinical trials yet. But this peptide works by blocking NNMT. This is an enzyme that slows metabolic rate and NAD recycling. So it's been shown to be overactive or overabundant in people with obesity and it can it basically depletes our NAD levels. By inhibiting this enzyme NNMT, 5-amino increases NAD plus availability and boosts energy turnover. So what else it does in the animal models is it shrinks fat cells, makes them smaller, and it improves energy, and it improves uh, metabolic output. That means smaller fat cells, improved energy, and better metabolic output. For 2026, it remains one of my favorites to do as a short cycle paired with MOTC and NAD+. Combining these is going to be is amazing for accelerating fat loss and improving energy efficiency, insulin sensitivity, fat burning. Most research frameworks look at four to eight week cycles here. And number four is AOD9604 plus L-carnitine. This is the fat mobilizing combo. Very controversial, but I still love it. This one continues to interest me because I love the mechanism that it taps into, especially for people who train consistently. So AOD9604 is a modified fragment of human growth hormone. It does not increase IGF-1 the way growth hormone does. 
It's actually just the lipolytic fragment, which is the fat burning fragment. It increases fat breakdown and decreases fat formation or storage. It's best paired pre-workout like a fasted zone two cardio. On its own, it does AOD 9604 does mobilize fat, but that means that you have to burn that fat off or else it will just be restored. And that's where L-carnitine comes into play. L-carnitine brings the, so AOD releases the fatty acids and L-carnitine brings them to the mitochondria so they can be converted for usable energy. In other words, it's burning the fat. <laughs> so putting these two together, you basically get your workout becomes more of a metabolic accelerator. Now, just to be fair, this is not going to be as effective as our retitrutide or any of our GLPs for reducing weight but it's a great tool for breaking through a plateau or just burning fat more efficiently during your training sessions. I like to think of it as amplifying the fat burning effects of my cardio session. Number five is gonna be either tessamorelin or ipamorelin. These are muscle preservers and heading into 2026, these still are gonna play a key role for maintaining muscle and protecting metabolism. Epimorelin is more gentle, short acting. It's amazing for sleep, recovery, and muscle repair, all things that are going to assist us in our fat loss journey. And I reach for it conceptually during training phases or if somebody's transitioning off of GLP ones and then, you know, wants another tool. And then tessamorelin is the stronger sort of growth hormone releasing hormone analog. There's a lot of clinical data here, and it shows reductions in visceral fat while maintaining lean mass. This is ideal for recomposition, meaning burning fat and gaining muscle, and it stabilizes metabolism after fat loss because we're going to build back that muscle. So either option is great to prevent metabolic slowdown that usually follows a diet phase. Again, we, when we lose muscle, we're losing some of our uh, metabolic rate. Our basal metabolic rate slows down meaning our body needs less calories to survive off of. So we really want to add back some of that muscle to kind of regain some of that metabolic flexibility and that basal metabolic rate or basically being able to eat more calories at rest. So how would a smart frame framework look for 2026? Well, let's break it down. So we could do phase one where we start with red true tide to reset appetite and metabolism and you know burn off that extra weight that we put on maybe over the winter then phase two could be MOTC with five amino and NAD plus this is going to restore some of the mitochondrial efficiency and continue to help with our insulin sensitivity and a little bit of fat burning just a, a restorative phase after a GLP and then phase three could be your AOD 9604 with L-carnitine to mobilize fat and burn fat that could also be layered into some of the other uh, cycles. And then phase four might look like tessamorelin or ipramorelin to preserve muscle, enhance recovery. Each phase runs around six to eight weeks on, followed by six to eight weeks off of that particular peptide to kind of recalibrate. And that's why we could rotate these in cycles. We could also pair ipamorelin or tessamorelin with our GLPs to hold on to muscle tissue in that fat loss phase. And remember, peptides are not shortcuts, they're amplifiers. So when your nutrition, your sleep, and your training are dialed in, your body behaves like it's 20 years younger, you have more energy, better resilience, and real metabolic freedom. If you want to keep learning about peptides, metabolism, and women's health, I host a private women's community where we go deeper into the science in a safe, very supportive way, and I'll link all that below. You can also download my free peptide guide. That's going to be linked below as well, and that's where you'll get onto my email list where I share even more information on a weekly basis. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.